yellow key. You put it on your keychain. It's just a regular suspicious bed now. And then uh, right here is your first uh, real taste of weight. Did did Alphys create Flowey? That, that, here's your first real taste of that possibility. You see golden flowers on the table. Entry number seven. We'll need a vessel to wield the monster's souls when the time comes. What about something that's neither human nor monster? Whatever. They're a hassle to work with anyway. The seeds just stick to you and won't let go. So the uh, the seeds there that um, the the fact they stick to you I think is both somewhat referencing like Flowey's attack patterns a little bit, but um, it also explains how the flowers got here in the first place. And uh, once again, a, a new type of creepy right here. Now this uh, this little bit of fight here, I love how creepy this is. It's like wait, you're, you're expecting a fight and then. Oh god, what? This relentless future finally looks brighter and brighter. So that's uh, that's what people don't see very often if you check uh, Reaper Bird after um after it's sparable. Like it's it's not something I've really um this is probably not the best music to talk over, but that's okay. It's, it's not something I've really been um, in the mindset of um, often in my life at all, right? Like, um, truly being like a dedicated fan of something, right? I've played 900 hours of FTL, played 2300 hours probably of, of freaking League of Legends. Um, I like those games a lot. I, I really enjoy them. They're good games. But I don't, I don't have a fanatical, like, oh man, you have to play FTL. Like, I don't have that, like, burning passion in me that I, I do with that. Like, probably the last thing like that that was anything close was, like, um, Final Fantasy VI freaking 18 years ago or something along those lines. I just want to prolificize about the game and, like, spread the word to the masses, right? Uh, I'm used to being like the the more cynical outsider that is not part of the uh, the fandom, and even of games I really like, I still don't get that passionate about it, right? I'm like, yeah, no, keep talking. Uh, no one explodes is a really great game. It's it's a lot of fun. You should play it. And that's kind of where it stops, right? Like I don't I don't feel this further urge to be like if they're like, nah, I don't think I will. I don't usually feel I don't really feel this like. But wait, maybe you actually do though. I, I think that's partially because like I didn't want to at first, right? Um, like, it's like, wait, no, no, listen, I didn't think I was gonna like it either, though, but I, but I did, it was totally good, so maybe the same thing's true for you, so, but I don't want to play, but maybe you do want to play, maybe you should, though, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's hard, let's just check it, it's unclear how many dogs this counts as, what do you mean six dogs, it's unclear, it's specifically unclear how many dogs this counts as, right? You pet the amalgamate. It starts to generate a stage one happiness froth. I love I love stage one happiness froth. This guy, this song like a little bit reminds me of in the Hall of the Mountain King. You pet decisively. The amalgamate seems to be satisfied by all this. You'd give it a tummy rub, but it's not clear where its tummy begins or ends. The amalgamate's feelers rotate quickly. Nothing else happens. Look it away. Okay. Uh, let's see. Was there any? Oh, I just saved too. Is there a flag for if you've uh, dealt with uh, Indogany <laughs> that I can uncheck? I don't think I know of such a flag. I I'm gonna take just a quick look because I screwed up. I wanted to do something else. Okay, what if I just make this like a zero? I'm just gonna try. We just saved it, so we can fix stuff if I break it. I'm gonna try to... There's the fog back. I think I just did it. Did I Did I do it first try? The fog was back. I think I think I might have did it. I think I might have done it. First try! 
I, I am officially uh, elite Haxor, you guys. Officially, I'm elite Haxor. No, I've, I've got this. I've got this item right here, a hush puppy, which um, silences dogs. You eat the hush puppy. Dog magic is neutralized. And doggity is contented. Got there! Got there! Then, of course, you got the nice little creepy fridge that's actually moving here. Once again, subverting your expectations a little bit. Entry number 20. Asgore left me five messages today. Four about everyone being angry. One about this cute teacup he found that looks like me. Notably, that, that teacup actually exists and it's next to her desk. So, uh, that, that kind of shows a little bit about Alphysis and Asgore's relationship and uh, how Asgore is still always thinking of other people even when things are kind of horrifying. Oh, that's actually a subtle thing there, too. You can't uh, walk past the last fridge behind it. Ha! Huh. I hadn't noticed that before. That actually blocks your path there. And then this fight is... Creepy and sad. Amalgamate. Attack negative 12, defense negative 5. Seems like it's losing itself. You said something like, You look horrible. Why are you even alive? What? You didn't say that? You call this a performance? <laughs> that's 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 simultaneously awful and hilarious. You laugh and keep laughing. It's so funny you can't stop. Tears run down your face. What? You didn't do that? But it's not funny. You won! Yeah, that would make sense, Calm Knight. If uh, you won had the uh, a question mark and said, Watch the event, by the way, just it's kind of music how the uh, animation is set up uh, as far as that goes, it just auto-opens. And uh, Snowy also uh, is is one of the people that wrote to Alphys. Like, so the whole, like, I, I like that Snowy's basically, like, effectively a minor, like, mob, right? Like, he's just kind of a random encounter, something that by default you don't really care about, but he's got a whole life and story. He's got his father comedian that's actually good at uh, the jokes and stuff, and uh, but his father's not really taking care of him very well. His mom died, and that like really upset him, and he's just trying to make jokes about stuff to kind of ease that a bit. And uh, if he goes missing, he's got a friend that uh, comes and tries to help find him, figure out where he is with the break there, and uh, he's like, Alpha's basically told him that his mom's coming back, and then that hasn't happened, so he's writing letters to Alphys to try to figure out what the hell the deal is. Hey, stop. I got you got some food, okay? As I said, I was afraid I might... not come back. But that's not because of these guys or anything. I, I was just worried I would be too afraid to tell the truth that I might run away or do something cowardly I think a lot of people on a first uh, first time seeing that don't realize the uh, impact of that statement there and you get a little little smiley face on these the smile um, helps you kind of think of flowing. So, if you hadn't already realized the connection, these messages kind of drive it home. The first golden flower that grew before all the others. 
The flower from the outside world. What happens when something without a soul gains the will to live? Entry number 18. The flower's gone. Thanks to you, everything has fallen into place. Hobo. See you soon. So this is important both because the, the voice and um, because they're calling you by the name Hobo again. That's uh, specifically why that's important there. And of course, this freaks out. And of course, then uh, you've got the vines jamming shut the door. Uh, that uh, is not necessarily the most obvious link to Flowey, actually, but yeah, it's, it's Flowey. Save points missing here, of course. And, and to be clear, I actually do like the fact that there's no, like, run button in the game. I think it, uh, is, is a good thing for pacing when you're playing the game normally. But, uh, I'm very happy that I have the option to during, uh, this playthrough. So what's, uh, kind of interesting here is you just had that weird-ass phone call. I don't know if this is true for everyone, I, I, I should clarify, but, uh, I would say for me, I kind of forgot about it pretty quick. And, uh... I, I haven't heard other people really, uh, like, kind of talking about it or dwelling on it that much, so I think a lot of people kind of forget about it a little bit. So you had that call, you're, you're shot up here in the elevator um, in kind of a weird way, but then you get here and you're kind of mostly thinking about the Asgore fight, and then um, once uh, things progress from there, uh, that's, that's what you're thinking about. You, you kind of forget about the phone call entirely. Goodbye. There's a pause, you, you recognize, and it's like, wait, what? Look at his face, too. Beep. Then, of course, uh, call back to the uh, very beginning. Toriel uses the same, uh, same line there. What a miserable creature, torturing such a poor, innocent youth. Just, uh, just watch Asgore's face if you've never noticed uh, all of the uh, expressions he's... Uh, everyone's faces, really, but especially Asgore's. And yeah, there's uh, Alphys talking about, uh, once again, uh, so, I mean, because Alphys had a big crush on Asgore, so she's like really surprised to see someone else that looks uh, similar. And, uh, th like, this is further emphasizing, like, no one has seen Toriel. It's been that long since she's gone. To the uh, back to the ruins and stuff like that. It's like a long, long time has passed. That voice. Hello. I think we may know each other. <laughs> oh, hey. I recognize your voice too. I am Toriel. So nice to meet you. This must be your brother, Papyrus. Greetings, Papyrus. It's so nice to finally meet you. Hey, Papyrus, what does a skeleton tile his roof with? Remember at the very beginning of the game when we talked to Toriel at the dummy, before talking to the dummy we talked to Toriel, she gave you an example of a joke you could tell that's uh, a good way to have conversations and stuff. Hmm, snowproof roof tiles? No, silly. A skeleton tiles his roof with... Shingles! Come on, Asgore. It's gonna be okay. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Y yeah Asgore. A, a nine's right about that fish thing. S s sometimes you've just gotta... Uh, s s stop going after furry boss monsters and... J just get to know a really cute fish? <laughs> Undead's face. It's a metaphor. My child, it seems as if you must stay here for a while. But looking at all the great friends you have made, I think... I think you will be happy here. So this right here feels like, uh... Just the end. Like, that, that, that feels like the end. Despite the fact you still got the text at the bottom. But that is one hint that there's more to come. And, of course, the phone call, which just is really easily to, easy to forget, but... Uh, hey, uh, that, that reminds me. 
Papyrus, you called everyone here, right? Well, uh, besides, uh, her. Uh, uh, anyways, if I got here before you, how did you know to call everybody? Let's just say a tiny flower helped me. Uh, a, a t tiny f flower? She goes gaming. That's a oh wow. That's a good point. I hadn't noticed that. Undyne's the only one actively struggling here. She's got enough determination to try to fight back. So right here we have uh, some what people like casually they're like oh man this game's breaking the fourth wall and stuff, but the fourth wall is like being broken is a relevant major plot point that is actually executed and fully explained. So that's that's the best part of all this. Like it it makes complete perfect sense what's going on here. Despite, uh, kind of the, the blatant, uh, text and phrasing and stuff. Don't you get it? This is all just a game! If you leave the underground satisfied, you'll win the game! If you win, you won't want to play with me anymore! Turns out I do still want to play with you, Blau, even though we've, uh, we've won, uh, multiple times. I'll hold victory in front of you. Just within your reach, and then tear it away, just before you grasp it. Over, and over, and over. What? Music's so strong. Here's about where I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> it uh, it'll it'll happen probably stronger later because I've seen this scene enough. But that's that's really strong. The music kicking in. Do not be afraid, my child. No matter what happens, we will always be there to protect you. So this is actually kind of interesting. How. Um, Despite already doing it before in multiple cases and stuff, it's still, at least for me, and I assume most, but not all people, still manages to pull the whole, uh, the whole trick, the fake out. This can't be happening! You! You! And then you're like, oh. Shoot. I can't believe... You're all so stupid. Howdy. Hobo, are you there? It's me, your best friend. So, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about this a little uh, in advance here. Um, with this fight, so this fight starts kind of normally. And, uh, well, except for the name, the name emphasis, which is awesome. And the music starts a little calm. And then, colors. So we, we've talked again about the emphasis of colors before. Basically, we had it in Asgore and like slightly in like lemon bread and stuff. And now here's the full power of colors in a fight. Be like, holy crap, this is incredible and amazing. <sighs> Legendary being made of every soul in the underground. You start out with attacks like, uh, Toriel's. There's nothing else to do with the first year. <laughs> Punch him. <laughs> the true final battle was finally beginning. You check again. The absolute god of hyperdeath. And uh, so we'll talk about this first attack here. I really like the first attack because it's incredibly showy. It looks crazy and it's kind of intimidating, but it's actually not very hard to dodge. I'm probably gonna get hit now that I said that, but. So this, this is crazy. <laughs> And 
Oh man, we still got some kisps. Throw the stick at uh, Azrael. Seems like a great idea. You wanna you wanna drink some spider cider, Azrael? I got plenty. Yep, that's a uh, the, that's the thing. I'm glad you mentioned that fire breathing. I, I meant to reference that again, but he's wearing the heart shaped locket. He's wearing the other uh, best friends for forever locket. You both had one. Um, I mean, healing mostly doesn't matter, but if we manage to not uh, get hit at all here, which is very hard, then we'll still have 20, I think. Okay, he still says it the same way. I mean, I guess we- I mean, we have died in the run, though. But, I, I was like, I was pretty sure he didn't change the text here. But, like, I was wondering if we hadn't actually died in the fight against him, he wouldn't say every time you die there. So I'm like, I haven't died, buddy. Bring it. Um, so yeah, the, the phrasing on uh, this part right here, I think, is really kind of cheesy. But... It's still really, really powerful all the same. It uh, it really, really hits hard. Um, there's some some really powerful callbacks here in the uh, the text and the choices you can choose. Um, Sans's text is also uh, like notably depressing and so counter to his character that it uh, it feels. Well, it's it's counter to what you like know of the character mostly, but it's also kind of touching on some of his deep uh, deep concerns and stuff. But so we'll we'll proceed. You struggle. Nothing happened. You tried to reach your save file. Nothing happened. You tried again to reach your save file. Nothing happened. It seems saving the game really is impossible. But, maybe, with what little power you have, you can save something else.